So Rosie, thanks for joining us. It was Ken Lay that recently coined the phrase the Rose Batty Factor. How do you feel about that? Um, oh, look, it's fairly, um, I feel incredulous, honestly, you know, you, you it's um, really special. It's special, but it's quite, um, you know, going from somebody who, you know, a year ago obviously was in a very different place to all of a sudden being publicly recognised and, and someone like our police commissioner to um, really um, hold me in such high esteem and mention me in that way, it's, it's, it's really um, very special. It's clear you have a natural talent and, and you seem comfortable in the public sphere. I th I, look, I think you're right. It's um, a surprisingly good fit. I've always enjoyed meeting people. I always enjoy having a good chat and a good conversation and a good debate. People used to say to me, I think, you, you know, you, you need to make time for grieving or try to make decisions on my behalf. And I would just be furious because grief comes to you in waves and there'll be a moment in every day where I tear up. Um, mostly I can keep it in check. But there are my private times when it's quiet and there's no one around. And then that's my private grieving time. Um, so, you know, that to me is the reality of grief. There's going to be an occasion that triggers off something, a memory and a, a something I should have been able to celebrate. And I'll go for a period of time right now when Luke should be um, graduating from school next week. Um, and going on to high school next year. And that's a difficult time for me. So, and then obviously I've got Christmas and after Christmas is the anniversary of his death. So you're always working towards something that you're gonna have to get through and there's no way around it. You have to get through it. You know, at some point, I hope I can bear to look at his videos of when he was a little baby. But I, 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 I know for me that just puts me in a position of or to grief. I've always admired people that can make good out of bad. And um, I guess it was never a choice for me in, because that's, that's how I would seek to hold myself. Um, and I've, I feel very sad when I, I hear people talk negatively um, about something that's happened in their past. They've got every reason to feel like that, but they don't move on. They don't look to learn or grow wisdom or insight. And they, you know, they feel trapped. And they are trapped in hatred and blame and anger. And it's, it's, it's sad. I feel sad for people like that, even though I understand that's our, you know, that I think is a trend that we kind of almost endorse in our culture. So yeah, I know all the bad things about Greg, but I don't choose to to talk about them, I don't choose to run in down, I don't cho choose to um, dwell on that. Um, you know, what, we all know what he did was wrong. We all know what he did was beyond reproach and, um, and, and could, should never have happened. But it did, and his family have to live with that, and that's a really unfair place for them to be as well. So I just think that, um, you know, we remember Luke being a lovely little boy and um, he's striving to be the best person I can be out of this so that Luke, that Greg hasn't won. Hmm.